In the final quarter of 1956, momentum achieved by the Atlas Weapon System program was evident at the Air Force Missile Test Center, Cape Canaveral, at Edwards Rocket Base, at the Sycamore Canyon Static Test Facility, and at Convair's San Diego plant. Progress shared by associate contractors and supported by suppliers throughout the United States. On October 1, first day of the quarter, Missile 31-15 left San Diego en route to AFMTC. The eight-day trip served as a test run for future missile shipments along this route. Speed and road conditions were analyzed with respect to G-forces exerted on the missile. Bridge widths and underpass clearances were found adequate. The missile tank pressure was successfully maintained during the entire journey. Delivery was made on October 8th. Here at AFMTC, construction crews were at work during the quarter on each of the four firing complexes scheduled for use in the Atlas program. Early in the quarter, builders were progressing rapidly on initial work at pads 11 and 13. On October 17th, blockhouse forms and steel were in place and workers poured the first concrete. This was pad 11 on November 30th. Construction here began ahead of work at pad 13 with crews alternating between the two launching complexes. The task is on schedule. Stand 12, seen here in December, is scheduled for completion on February 1st. Pad 14, nearest to completion, was released to Convair for beneficial occupancy on the first day of the quarter. On this date, installation of the flame deflector for the test stand was nearly complete, and construction of the 125-foot service tower had begun. Structural work was completed during the third week of November. The entire structure weighs 150 tons. It moves 550 feet to the side of the launching stand so as to be clear of the flame bucket during firing. Installation of this pad 14 launcher mechanism began on November 21st. The task was completed during December. At the end of 1956, construction was nearly complete on pad 14. Next comes installation and checkout of controls and test firings. And then pad 14 will be ready for the first flight of Atlas. En route to Edwards Rocket Base, October 25th, 1956, Missile 2A. This was the first production missile moved to this base. The missile was moved into Convair's building at Edwards for component and systems checkout. On December 23rd, Convair personnel erected missile 2A into stand 1A, preparing for vertical checkout and a firing scheduled for early February. Also at Edwards, the Army Corps of Engineers is building an additional Atlas test stand designated 1-1. Work is on schedule. At Sycamore Canyon, 16 miles northeast of San Diego, activity on stand S1 centered around final preparations for the system's test program. On October 18th, missile 1A was erected in the service tower. In early December, the first Atlas missile was almost ready for static firing. As a preliminary, a LOX water blowdown run was set up to check actual operation of the LOX pressure system 
as well as the various fueling and recording systems of the test complex itself. The test was run on December 5 and went off according to plan. The run also afforded Convair's test firing crew in the blockhouse valuable experience in working together as a coordinated team in anticipation of the first static test firing. Sycamore Canyon, December 21st. Test plan, a one and one half second hot run. The minimum time to bring engines up to full thrust. Test objective, to evaluate the airframe structure and propulsion compatibility. Test procedure, to run the test with fuel in the missile fuel tank and simulate the temperature environment with liquid nitrogen in the missile LOX tank. Liquid oxygen was supplied from a heavy-duty auxiliary LOX tank located in the service tower. Missile 1A was fired. The firing was satisfactory and all test objectives were met. Visual observation and instrumentation indicated a normal shutdown. At 33 seconds after shutdown, an explosion occurred in the area of the turbo exhaust and heat exchanger, rupturing the main low-pressure fuel line. A fire ensued, causing damage to the propulsion section structure, plumbing, and wiring. Facility damage was negligible. In order to maintain overall test schedules, missile 1A was removed and has been replaced by standby missile 3A. On October 16th, the Air Force approved a contract for construction of the second test stand at Sycamore Canyon. F.E. Young Construction Company began work in this area on October 29th. On November 6th, workers were well along on preliminary excavation for the test stand and for the tunnel connecting the blockhouse and transfer room. This is the blockhouse area one month later. Footings for the test stand retaining walls were complete, with reinforcing steel going into place. Plumbing and electrical conduits have been installed under the basement slab, and the sub-slab for the basement floor poured. The new Convair Astronautics plant on San Diego's outskirts is developing rapidly. This plant and its equipment will represent a $40 million investment shared equally by the Air Force and by Convair Division of General Dynamics Corporation. This facility will provide a million square feet of floor space for research, development, and production of astronautic projects. Meanwhile, work on the Atlas program proceeds at an increasing tempo, not only here at Convair's existing San Diego facilities, but also in the plants of other associated Atlas program contractors. General Electric at Philadelphia and Syracuse, Burroughs Corporation, Rocketdyne Division of North American Aviation, American Machine and Foundry, Arthur D. Little Corporation, and Holmes and Narber. In activating its share of the program, Convair is coordinating the efforts of more than 1,000 subcontractors and suppliers throughout the United States. Of these, 59% are small business firms. A typical organization from this group is Washington Steel Corporation, which supplies stainless steel that Convair uses in fabricating the missile tank. Washington Steel recently purchased a 52-inch Sedzimer mill to supplement the 39-inch cold roll mill already in operation. It is this equipment which makes it possible for Washington Steel to efficiently meet tolerances required by the Atlas, turning out missile skin material in rolls up to 48 inches wide held to thickness tolerances from 0.001 to 0.0025. 418 of the suppliers for Convair Astronautics are in the Los Angeles area. Representative of this group is Precision Sheet Metal Company in Inglewood. Convair subcontracted production of the missile thrust structure to Precision Sheet Metal on October 10, 1956. This structure makes up the aft end of the missile 
and contains the power components used in the first stage of flight. Precision Sheet Metal Company began production of these items during the quarter. 59 days after typing of the initial purchase order, the first three units were shipped to Convair Astronautics. With the advent of the Atlas program, Wiley Laboratories, El Segundo, California, expanded its laboratory to add specialized tooling necessary for testing of missile components. During a typical test, engineers and technicians monitor and record the complete range of performance of components under conditions of extreme temperatures, altitude, humidity, corrosive atmosphere, fungus, and acceleration, plus the induced environments of shock and vibration. Test engineers subject each component to all environments which will be present before and during an actual flight. Minneapolis Honeywell is representative of the many suppliers providing electronic components for the Atlas program. One of the activities of this company is development and production of germanium power transistors. Technicians for this project work under carefully controlled atmospheric conditions. These transistors are being used in such Atlas components as the autopilot, the range safety beacon, and range safety beacon power supply. Transistors offer advantages in size, weight, resistance to vibration and shock, reliability, and longer life. Sperry Gyroscope Company, New York, has developed and is making oscillator tubes to Convair specifications. Skilled personnel working in a controlled laboratory environment use specialized techniques such as localized silver brazing in Plystron tube assembly. The Klystron tube is a component of the Azusa transponder, airborne portion of the range tracking system. Before acceptance, each Klystron unit must prove its ability to perform satisfactorily under extreme force and temperature variations. Electronic checkout is a final step prior to shipment to Convair. In Massachusetts, Cambridge Corporation is working with Convair engineers on the development of fuel and liquid oxygen transfer units. These pumping units will serve as ground support equipment for safe and efficient filling of the missile LOX tank and fuel tank. Many unique problems associated with handling of large volumes of liquid oxygen at extremely low temperatures have been worked out. With this system, test and launch site personnel will be able to accomplish missile LOXing in a matter of minutes. The test equipment available at this site has facilitated development of these units to Convair specifications. The Arizona Division of Goodyear Aircraft manufactures the largest single piece of Atlas ground handling equipment. Each missile requires the use of a handling trailer from early in production through erection for launching and flight. The completed trailer and accessories will transport the missile, maintain a longitudinal stretch during transport and erection, sustain missile tank pressures, mate the missile to the launcher, and provide support during erection. Barrow Manufacturing Company has developed a direct reading compact frequency meter and calibrator capable of precise frequency measurements in the 400 cycle range. This unit is a component of the Blockhouse Missile Power Console. From the plant in Garland, Texas, more than 100 of these units have been shipped to San Diego. Typical of the many items, large and small, simple and complex, which American industry is contributing to Convair's Atlas program. These combined efforts are integrated into the missile production program in San Diego. The precision rolled stainless steel sheet is formed and welded into missile tank sections. And the sections are welded together in specially designed jigs. Retaining rings, not a part of the tank structure, hold these sections in position during fabrication. Stretch forming is used to shape curved tank sections, such as are used in the forward and intermediate bulkheads. The increasing pace of Atlas production is evident in the systematic routine of factory steps on these tank sections. 
During the quarter, the contractor completed fabrication of tanks for missiles 10A, 11A, 12A, 13A, and 14A. In the final assembly area, the missile begins to assume its final configuration. Assembly workers prepare for installation of electronic systems. Mounting brackets are fastened to the missile tank, and the pod covers are seated. They are made of honeycomb sandwich rather than metal to prevent their interfering with electromagnetic radiations and because of weight advantages. Production crews add electrical equipment, fuel, locks, and pressure lines, vernier engines, tubing, and prepare the tank for mating to the thrust structure. As a final step, crews install the particular electronic equipment called for by each missile's test objectives. Convair's electronic assembly group assembles these canisters in another area of the San Diego factory. In development and production of these systems, highest reliability is vital. For example, the Azusa transponder, which will be used as the airborne component of range instrumentation for the Atlas program, as well as other missile programs. The electrical assembly group at Convair is responsible for assembling control consoles to be used at missile test sites. At the missile checkout area, engineers and technicians concentrate on improving techniques of functional testing. Checkout crews use the specially designed consoles to establish the dependability of missile components and the efficiency with which they function within a system. These specialists checked out valve and regulator components for missile 6A in mid-November. The instrumentation itself is measured for accuracy with a valve system simulator, which electronically duplicates a correctly functioning missile valve system. Other evaluations are provided for all systems which can be checked while a missile is in a horizontal position. Here, an experiment is underway to find if engine swiveling tests may be conducted with missiles in production checkout. For many people closely associated with the Atlas program, the highlight of 1956 occurred early in the morning of December 1st when missile 4A left the Convair factory. Its destination, Pad 14 at Cape Canaveral, Florida. Its assignment, first test flight of an Atlas vehicle.